Good morning, folks. We've got one of the most important and game-changing climate studies in the history of the field today. We'll hit weather, Earth history, space news, and space weather as well. Let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours with the southern coronal hole still dominating visibility. The incoming and short-lived pop-up points of brightness are the beginnings of that boil that will begin the next sunspot cycle. I wanted to peek in on the plasma curtain arching over the northwestern limb and then shifting to the limb, ramped up the spin and grew taller. The filament curtain mostly dispersed southward, but the remaining ropes on the crown indeed twisted up into solar tornadoes as they dance over the limb out of view. Quick look at the solar wind. In purple, the last 36 hours has seen the peak of the stream near 600 kilometers per second to now we're dropping under 400 kilometers per second this morning. Stream waning away, and so is the geomagnetic instability back to calm. Well, folks, while the eastern U.S. has had cities with the first ever February without snow, out west the records continue piling up. Happened again last night, and this morning a few more inches have been added to the total. Now, in between east and west, we're seeing the return of storms. The blue pop-ups near the center amidst the larger scale flows were indeed significant lightning storms last night. The seasonal shift is coming, and with it, the more energetic weather. And speaking of lightning, volcano investigations of lightning have always been about ash, heat, and friction. But today we're hearing about the intrinsic charge in the water vapor released, a discharge of stored potential. This ties in nicely with what we heard just about a year ago, where they were noticing lightning and other electrical interactions at volcanoes with little to no ash in the eruption. Last weather note. Word is spreading of the red snow in Antarctica, some areas so rich it looks like a crime scene. It is yet another instance of the red microbial life, however, finding a sweet spot of conditions in the summer heat. This does indeed happen over and over in many summers, and the next winter never fails to stack the snow upon it higher. Let's ease into space with Bach Globule BHR-71. These dark objects are gorgeous, but so mysterious that few hypotheses really satisfy their character. You can zoom and play with the light all you want. She's not going to say a word, unless you speak her language. Her dark secrets begin to be revealed in NIR polarization as the magnetic fields of the region can begin to slowly be seen layer by layer, stellar system by stellar system. When it was all said and done, the white lines tracing the overall field setup not only had symmetry on either side of the cosmic phantom, but their red and blue crosshairs in the middle represent the core of the fields and dark globule. Not bad for being hundreds of light years away. Up next, we find the first of two Quaternary International articles in the news today. This one further driving home the millennial scale cycles of the planet like the Halstatt cycle and its harmonics. And in terms of those major climate shifts here for the first time, we see the evidence from northwestern China and over a much, much longer timeline than exists for most similar studies. For our next story, we must begin with one of last year's top stories, and possibly the most absurd redating of geologic proportions in decades. They took the age of an ice cap on the Tibetan plateau down from being more than half a million years old to having a maximum age somewhere between 13 and 71,000 years, meaning it could be even younger. Now, this wide range was found from near the surface to a depth of over 200 meters, and with the near surface readings being as old as 50,000 years. So, now we come to today's other one from Quaternary International, indicating that at depths of over 100 meters, we're looking at only 1,300 to 1,400 years ago, and at only hundreds of years ago, while you're still dozens of meters down. When the world correctly inferred that the Tibetan Plateau ice could be much younger than that previous maximum age in that 2019 paper, I'm not sure anyone quite had this in mind, except maybe of course for this team, which is indeed the same team that did that 2019 bombshell paper, Nobel Prize in order for this group. And yet, in observer world, the top paper of the day shows carbon dioxide's first direct sign of weakness under CMIP6. It is one thing for researchers to begin showing how much more the sun affects the climate than they believed, but when quadrupling CO2, yes, that's going up by four times, gives different models not only different changes to things like sudden stratospheric warming events, but when it's not close with anywhere from a 50% cut to a 200% increase of current rates, means they can't tell if increasing carbon dioxide by four will double these polar vortex breakdowns or cut their occurrence in half. But it gets better. 
the models do agree on one thing. There is absolutely no effect over the North Atlantic to quadrupling carbon dioxide. None. It's a consensus, so you can't question it. And after that fun little joke, just let the facts sink in for the moment. In their models, quadrupling carbon dioxide, no effect on the North Atlantic. And just like that, the moment's gone, and we find they're also pretty sure that we're going to get more inter-atmospheric layer coupling, which means that the introduction of CO2 to the atmosphere has a significant increase on how much the sun affects the climate. I literally can't make this stuff up. This is one of the world's most respected journals. And so, I say to this team from Princeton, Cornell, NYU, Oxford, NASA, NOAA, the UK Met Office, and top climate groups in France, Japan, Russia, and Germany, you know my job isn't supposed to be this easy, right? Just make sure you come through in 2022. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>